Hello, Colleen. Thank you so much for joining me today. I am beyond excited for our conversation that we're about to have just because I know so many people are going to benefit. But before we jump in, I would love for you to start by telling us a little bit more about how you got into your line of work. So I have two children and I had really, for the most part, really positive birth experiences. You know, it wasn't easy, but it was certainly satisfying and empowering. Oh. And I was kind of, and also um, the same with breastfeeding and just raising a baby. I felt like this is really meaningful and I'm innately good at it. And I just felt very connected to myself and my children and other women who were going through the same thing and kind of vowed that at some point in my life, I was going to work in that space. Um, and I was a stay-at-home mom in the beginning. I then went back to work in my relatively cushy advertising and marketing job, um, but did not feel very satisfied or very driven to do the work. Um, and I did it for a while because, you know, finances. And when my kids were older, I decided to take the plunge and become a doula. Um, and I never looked back after that. And I've been doing this for about 15 years now. And um, I can't imagine doing anything else um, for a living. Or, you know, yeah. That's awesome. That's amazing. That's a, that's amazing that you had so many good experiences and then that innately um, like, oh, I'm good at this. This is great, you know, because I, I definitely had some moments where I'm like, wow, this is not so easy, you know? So it's just very refreshing to know that it does come easy for some people. And those well, are the people like you that I'm glad that you went into this line of work because you can help the rest of us. <laughs> well, you know? I appreciate that. But I, I do have to say, it's not that it was easy. Right. It was meaningful. Yes. And it felt important and it felt very empowering and it just felt like these I'm responsible for these children so I'm gonna do the best damn job I can do mm -hmm. and same with birth you know I was blown away by kind of the whole sacred aspect of birth not just you know a baby coming out so it wasn't easy but it was it really shook my world in terms of priorities I can so relate to that because I definitely was in the grind and go, go, go. And I worked at this big, um, you know, corporate PT company and I loved what I did and I worked lots of hours and I really had a lot of fulfillment with it. And I really was kind of, yeah, just really surprised with how much that hit me as well too. And, you know, that really caused me to kind of rethink everything. And I left that company and that's exactly why I started my own business. So that way I could have the flexibility so that I would be with my my first baby, obviously, at the time. So my one child at first, and then I worked at night and I just totally worked around it so I could still help contribute and still, you know, kind of um, have that purpose with my job. But then, I mean, I totally, I totally resonate with that, with that just your priorities change and everything shifts. And um, that's so, so true. So for anyone who has never heard of a birth or labor doula, um, can you please explain what that is and what they do? Sure. So uh, a, a labor birth labor and birth doula functions as the rock around which the chaos and uncertainty and unpredictability of labor and birth swirl. Mm -hmm. um, medical folks don't have the time or the inclination or even the training to support women emotionally through birth. And um, some are, are better at it than others, and some take more time than others. But in general, um, they're all about making sure that, you know, everybody's safe and that there are no, that risks are minimal. And, you know, that's what they're supposed to do. And, you know, OBs are trained for surgery. They're not trained to watch and wait. And the majority of folks give birth with an OB. Um, <coughs> excuse me. And the doula fills that gap. Um, she is there uh, for the long haul. Um, she provides that missing piece of 
emotional, and often physical support to help a birthing person stay motivated, um, stay focused, and um, be reminded that she's not alone. Mm-hmm. Um, and the other part of that support is uh, for the partner who, you know, probably has never done this before. And if they have, it's never the same every time. And so. That's um, a good point. Yeah. yeah. Even such, subsequent births, it can be very different. Yeah. Yep. To give them a break when they need it, to help them support the birthing person and um, to kind of function as their caregiver as well, at least emotionally. Um, so, you know, modern birth just doesn't take into account that emotional piece. And that's where a doula comes in. And we don't change shifts as the doctors, nurses, midwives do. Um, two doulas and you has a little different uh, business model, which we started five years ago. Um, just a real quick history of that. Emily and I were working as solo labor doulas and postpartum doulas as well. And we were both at the point where we were starting to burn out because as you can imagine, you know, getting up in the middle of the night, being at the beck and call of, you know, whatever is happening with labor and, you know, doing our best to sustain ourselves through 20, 30, sometimes 40 hours of labor with very little or no sleep, the burnout factor is high. And we really, she and I really connected and we decided to offer ourselves as a team. We weren't sure if the market would bear it because it meant raising our rates because we both needed to make a living. Well, lo and behold, it did. It started out, you know, five ish years ago with just Emily and me. And now we have almost 20 doulas in our group. And we uh-huh. didn't dream that that was going to happen. Yeah. Um, so um, the long story short of that is that we have found that having two doulas for each client for birth support is sustainable for everybody. Yes. It's sustainable for the doulas and it ensures that the birthing person will not have a strange or unknown doula at their birth if her doula, um, you know, gets sick or gets the flu or gets called to jury duty or gets called to another birth, which happens, right? Right. So um, that's a way we have found for us to offer even more continuous um, support and um, make sure that our clients feel comfortable with whichever one of us would show up. Yeah, that's great. And truly, you can't help people if you're burnt out and you're not right. in it anymore, right? So right. we want yeah. your knowledge out there helping women yes. and and being passed around. And oh, absolutely. Um, so I heard you say, um, thinking about the question, like why is it helpful to have one? I heard you say the emotional support, the motivation. Do you also help with pain management or strategies with that to, to help alleviate, you know, and make it a little easier for them? Yes. Um, you know, most folks um, know that labor loves change, physical change. And so we help with finding different positions to cope with with um, contractions. And it doesn't take the pain away, but it can ease it. It can help uh, folks kind of move through it. Um, so there's lots of physical things we can do in terms of positioning, changing that up, um, something called the double hip squeeze, also a sacral pressure, which is basically pushing on the sacrum during a contraction. The hip squeeze is squeezing the back of the hips during a contraction. We teach partners how to do that so that they can do it, and we will tag team in and out with them. Um, but probably the biggest physical um, pain coping mechanism that we use is just changing positions, getting on the ball, getting on hands and knees, standing, swaying, moving, mm-hmm. um, kneeling. Um, so that can help um, help folks move through the pain of contractions a little um, a little more uh, easily. And of course, you know, doula support is not just about unmedicated birth. And I think that's a misnomer that a lot of folks assume. Um, Our job isn't to tell folks 
how to birth or what to do or what not to do. It's to remind them of their options. And, you know, no one should ever suffer during birth. And there's pain, but suffering is when, you know, we just can't keep going. And right. um, suffering might be alleviated by an epidural or by a narcotic. And so, you know, we educate our clients and ad, not advocate, that's the wrong word, but we help them understand um, that they have it as an option. There is no shame. In fact, yes. we like to think of it as self-compassion to get help uh, in the form of pain medication. Right. Right. I, I totally agree with that. Like you <clears throat> are still a warrior, no matter how you bring your baby into the world. Like, yes. And, you know, I think we just, so many people can feel so defeated if it doesn't go the way that they, they plan. Um, and I can see a birth doula being instrumental in that no matter how it, you know, it's not like, Oh, now I feed them and I, and I didn't get my, my natural birth. No, then they're there with you in the hospital. They're there with you, helping you still along, all along the way. And I really can see, you know, knowing what we know with pain science and <clears throat> the, the correlation I should say the relationship between the brain and the pelvic floor. And when we're stressed mentally, it literally increases stress and tension in our pelvic floor. And hello, we want less tension when we're trying to help things pass through. So I can absolutely see just by having your presence, that will alleviate something, especially for a first time birth. But like you said, even if it's subsequent, it's a new birth. You know, maybe the partner is taking care of the older child or they wake up in the night or, you know, they're, they'll be, have to be pulled away. And like you said, the um, I'm thinking of a home birth now, but, you know, even the hospital, you know, someone's watching the, the baby, they're at the hospital. They don't have the experience, the partner, you know, that you would have. Um, and I just I think, uh, yeah, I can just see it's it's so incredible and it really will help with pain. Um, just because there's that alleviating factor, that assurance right. of they are there solely for, I used to think of it just for comfort, but I really love what you said as far as the emotional support. It takes a village. This is, you're not in this alone. Millions and billions really, you know, women have gone through this before and it's like a little piece of that history kind of passed down um, when you have another woman helping or, or a doula, I'm sure it could be a, a man, you know, helping a birthing person as well. Um, we kind of talked a little bit about this, but who would benefit most from working with a birth doula? You know, how does well, someone know if, if hiring one is right for them? It's important to have conversations, video chat, meet in person, with um, any doulas that uh, you might be considering because you want to make sure that you feel a connection to this person. And, um, you know, when we're in labor, we're pretty much laid bare. We're probably as vulnerable as we're ever gonna get. And <clears throat> feeling like the folks who are in the room aren't going to judge you, um, aren't going to uh, feeling like you trust that they will hold that space no matter what that is, even if the birthing person doesn't want anybody touching, anybody talking, which is sometimes the case, right? Um, but just knowing that there's a sense of trust that that doula is going to support you no matter what unfolds and no matter what decisions you make is mm -hmm. super important. Yeah, And I, I do want to backtrack just a moment. Okay. One of the things I didn't mention as a coping tool is following the breath. Uh, yes. Huge facet of not letting the monkey mind take over and create suffering. Yes. Right. Following the breath does not take away the pain, but it can help us not attach a story to what's happening and help us avoid suffering. Yeah, And that's something that, I mean, I teach that in classes. Um, and of course we teach all of the comfort measures and all of that. And, and the um, breath work also helps whether there's a cesarean birth or whether a woman has an epidural. I mean, staying present and in the moment um, is, is still really helpful and can, can add meaning to what a lot of folks perceive as, oh, you know, it's a surgical birth, you know, I, I, I'm just going to check out and, you know, whatever. Um, the same with an epidural, right? Yeah. 
there's still a sacredness. There's a sacredness to every birth, no matter how a baby comes out and following the breath can help us tap into this moment. What do I need right now? Yes. And it might be an epidural (laughs) or it might be a change of position or it might be, I need some water or it might be, I've got to get up, right? Or I've got to lie down, whatever that is. We can't figure out what we need in the moment if our mind is racing to the past or the future. So right. that uh, conscious breath work, and it's there's no big secret to it. It's simply following the breath and coming back to it every time our mind wanders. Yes. No fancy techniques that can make a big difference in um, coping. Yeah. So just not even... And it sounds like what I teach my my clients as well, like not just clearing your mind for a moment and literally bringing your attention inward where you think, okay, where do I feel it in my body? I feel my chest rise. I feel my belly rise, you know, trying to focus on that versus other sensations that are coming. And I remember with my first birth, oh my gosh, I really, you know, you, I would thought I was so excited and so ready for it. And then, you know, the waves came and I'm like, hmm this is a little more intense than I anticipated, you know, and then your brain literally goes to like, okay, something's really wrong, like really wrong because this is really intense and like, can something feel like this and not be really wrong, you know, and you're like, no, no, it's good, it's good, but yeah. We we spend a lot of time on that in uh, Birthing From Within, the the class that I teach. Um, It's normal to feel pain, Mm -hmm. right? And um nothing is wrong. There's nothing to fix. I mean, 99.9% of the time. Right. So when we, when we frame birth in that mindset and keep coming back to that, it can help us not panic, not create anxiety in our brain. And then, you know, to your point, close up. Yes. Which causes more pain, right? So that baby's coming out. That uterus is working super hard. And this is what I think people don't maybe realize is that they think that they're actually pushing the baby out. Like we're not actually pushing, we're helping the uterus is doing all the work, you know, and like the baby is gonna come out whether you're yeah, like you have an epidural and you have any sensation, or like back in the day, they used to like knock people out completely. I remember I had a patient who she had five children and she was so excited when her daughter was having her first baby. And I, and I remember thinking, I was just confused. And I'm like, I was young. And I was like, I don't mean to be like rude. I don't, please don't take this the wrong way. But I said, why are you so excited? Like you had five children yourself. And she's like, oh, I wasn't awake for any of that. Like she literally went to the hospital, twilight sleep or whatever they called it. And she said, yeah, I literally just woke up and my baby was there. Like, right. and it wasn't a C-section. Her body birthed it with her literally not even being awake. And that just right. blew my mind. Like, right. what a, you're robbing that woman of that. Yeah, you know, I mean, you know, they didn't think, they, they thought they were doing the right thing or helping, but it just, she missed that and experience that, for all her kids. That's yeah. the way it was done, right? Yeah. And I've heard a lot of stories like that. And when a woman feels... <clears throat> Like she's part of the decision-making process and things aren't done to her. Mm -hmm. She can feel more satisfied about the birth, no matter how it goes. Correct. Right. It's not about no interventions or, you know, no medical procedures. It's about feeling like if a decision has to be made, I'm part of that process. It's not being done to me. I may not like it. Right. I may feel disappointed, but at least I wasn't separated from the process. And that is where a woman can feel satisfied or at least not traumatized, right? Yes. By um interventions. Absolutely. And I think that's where we we can all support each other in allowing ourselves that compassion that really in that moment we're just meeting our body where it's at, you know, meeting our mind where it's at. Like <laughs> our journey is our journey and you may have had these plans, but you, like I said, you're still an amazing mom, amazing person. You know, you're bringing, bringing life into the world, no matter how you do it, it takes a lot to get that to that point. Right. And so we just have to kind of say, okay, what does my body need in this moment? And I'm going to make that. And like you said, when you're in the control where you at least are part of the process to say, okay, you know, then, um, and I, I see the birth doula, 
you know, being there, just being that, I know we can't, you didn't say advocate, but um, being that partner, being that embrace that someone who's going to help, help with that whole process. Mm -hmm. It's amazing. And, and reminding the birthing person and their partner or their attendant of the options. Yes. Right. That's really the key. It, you know, it's not advocacy. It's remember we talked about, you might want to do this or, you know, a decision has to be made. Here are your options, mm -hmm. right? Here are the things you can think about because, you know, the medical folks, they want the fastest thing, the most efficient thing. And that isn't always in the birthing person's best interest. Mm -hmm. And there's almost always time to say, let's slow down a minute and talk about this, right? It's rare that it's such an emergency that things have to happen immediately. And so uh, reminding folks take your time to talk through this um, can make a big difference in how they frame what's happening. And, you know, with, with childbirth, it, it's all about how we frame what we can't control. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. You know, surrendering to what we can't fix or change mm -hmm. and um, knowing that and, and, you know, making decisions on the things that we can impact. And I want to, one other point is um, coming up for me right now that I want to make. And then I do want you to delve into a little bit of what it looks like. So if someone is just like, oh, it, because you guys do give support even before there's that preparation. It's not just like, I show up at your birth and, you know, we're best friends, right. you know. So, but um, the question comes to my mind of like, well, why choose a birth doula versus have your sister or your cousin or your mom or someone be there? And, and I'd like to hear your thought. My first thought is this piece about co-regulation is that, you know, our nervous systems relate to each other and and feed off of each other. So if you've ever been around someone who's freaking out, it kind of amps you up a little bit. And so if you're not, like I said, even if it's a partner who's been through a birth already with this with the birthing person, um, they may be kind of nervous or, you know, I just, I can see that, you know, when you have so much experience like you guys would have, there's, we can't, um, you know, kind of not value that presence. And it really comes down to that, like nervous system co-regulation that, you know, not much is probably going to phase you. You're going to kind of stay nice and calm when that doubt may be seeping into other people's minds too, of like, Oh, is this, okay? or, you know, and so what would, what would, your thoughts beyond that? Well, well, I I think you're spot on with that. I also think that the emotional attachment that family members have can affect how subjective or sorry, objective they can be. Right. Um, you know, we want to fix it for our loved ones and there's nothing to fix. And it's really easy for family and sometimes friends to um, kind of get that worry thing going and you know, birthing folks pick up on that, even if they don't talk about it. You know, I, it. I've had, I've had someone's mother be in the room and she'll say, Oh, honey, you look so tired, <sighs> which is not helpful. No. Right. I mean, it's coming from a place of love, right. but that's not helpful. And, you know, and, and it's hurting that person to like, I'm hurting seeing you so tired or in pain. Like, let's get this right. You know, like it's out of it. Yes. And the birthing person's like, Oh yeah, I, I am. And be, they become more of a victim. Right. Mm -hmm. And, you know, doulas don't have that emotional connection. I mean, we're connected in terms of supporting, but we're not going to make any judgments. We don't have an agenda mm -hmm. other than to support and inform, right? Um, so that's where uh, doula support, I think, is super helpful versus family. And I always encourage in my prenatal classes, I encourage folks to if you are going to have a family member or a friend at your birth, have a frank talk now about what you do not, what will not be helpful. Yes. Um, and if they've got, you know, uh, their own emotional baggage from their own birth, that's going to come up. Mm -hmm. Right. And unless that family member or friend can be a silent supporter you know, just maybe giving water when needed or, you know, a, a massage when needed. But other than that, keeping their mouth shut, they're probably not the right person to be in the room. Yeah. Yeah. And and I think that's so important to really, 
you know, spend some time when you're pregnant thinking about, okay, who do I want at my birth? But also, even if they say, I'm going to be there, I want to be there. Are you really reassured with your mother-in-law? Are you really assured even with your own mom? Like, do you want her to to be there? Is it going to be, and thinking about, like you said, their past history, maybe have that conversation with them. Like what energy are they going to bring to that space, that room that may or may not. And, and as a birthing person, ideally they're the ones that have the final say of like, okay, I need to protect my energy in this space. Like, I don't think this is going to be a good fit, you know? Um, yeah. I, I, I like to call that the ultimate adulting. Yes. I mean, we really have to set boundaries now. Because this is important. This isn't just, you know, a trip you're going on or whatever. Yeah. This is a, a, a situation that's going to stick with you for your whole life. You know, our yeah. birth stories, we don't forget them. Mm -mm. And they can, you know, the the trauma may be uh, too hard of a word, but, you know, the emotional impact and the baggage sticks with us. And so it's super important to be mindful about who you invite into that space. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, this has been so amazing, so interesting, so helpful. You have given us so many nuggets. I would like to finish with saying with you kind of describing how it looks like to hire someone, you know, like two doulas in you. What what does that process look like? Would they try to contact you in the first trimester or the second? I know you guys' schedules fill up. So how like logistics and then um like birthing classes and all that? I think you you offer quite a bit. So Right. So the earlier folks hire us, the more or the earlier folks inquire, the more likely we're going to have availability. And from the day we're hired, whether it's, you know, the second month of labor or of pregnancy or, you know, two weeks before birth, uh, you know, the birthing time, um, we are a support person. Um, we are there for information, to bounce ideas off of, to talk about things that caregivers may have said or done that didn't sit well, helping you find the right caregiver, um, finding classes um, to, to, you know, learn all you can about what may or may not unfold. Um, so we are a trusted um, ally from the day we're hired, no matter when it is during labor. Um, we have a couple of prenatal visits when we get closer to the guest date to talk specifics, um, logistics. Um, and, you know, we come when um, a birthing person needs us. Um, we may not stay if it's early on. You know, we may check in or we may do a lot of phone support. We're still doing some virtual support for hospitals where doulas aren't allowed, which is a whole nother story we could talk about. Yeah. <laughs> um, but we are there uh, in whatever mode is possible um, when they need us. And we stay until after birth, um, until baby has hopefully latched on, until the birthing parent is resting and maybe had something to eat and is ready to just be with their baby. Then we go home. And after that, we check in within 24 hours to see how things are going. And we do a postpartum visit um, mm -hmm. to talk about the birth and see how things are going. And, you know, are there any signs of postpartum depression or any kind of emotional difficulties, even physical difficulties? You know, we are not doctors, but we can certainly tune into, you know, what's going on and here are some resources um, and especially emotional, um, maternal mental health resources, things like that. Um, you know, we can even help with showing a parent how to wear their baby, how to uh, sleep safely with their baby, if that's what they're interested in, maybe give a little bit of help with breastfeeding. Um, so there, it's not just about being at the hospital or at the birthing place, the birth center or at home, a home birth. Um, it's about lots of prep on the front end and follow up after baby's born. That's amazing. Excellent. That's so, so comprehensive and just so wonderful. So um, how can people learn more about you or contact you? And then, you know, what are some ways that they can work with you guys with uh, to-do list and you? Right. So going to our website, 
todolisanyou.com. Um, there's a contact us form. Folks can read all about our services, our classes. We offer virtual and in-person classes. Um, and um, all of the breadth of what we offer is on our website. And there's an inquiry form where they can check the boxes of the things they're interested in, um, including, by the way, free support groups every Tuesday at noon um, by via Zoom. Um, and then we follow up within 24 hours. And if we've got doulas available, we will connect them with the, the, in, the person inquiring and they take it from there. And uh, folks who hire our labor doulas get 20% off of all of our individual classes, our group, our group classes, not the package, but the, the individual group classes, whether they're virtual or in person, because okay. we feel very strongly that education and knowledge are a big part of preparation. Absolutely. And I'm a big proponent of getting your education and knowledge in a private, small business capacity, not one that's associated with the hospital, if it's available. Exactly. To you, right. I mean, yeah. the hospitals are going to train you how to be a good patient, not. Absolutely. Yeah. That's exactly right. And, that's, uh, that's <laughs> and they don't, they don't, they don't take into account the emotional side, as we talked about in the very beginning, you know, mm. how um, there's so much more to just getting through birth. Yes. And um, that's one of the things that I love about birthing from within that is that it, 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 we take the approach of letting go of an expectation about how it's going to go mm -hmm. and being open to whatever unfolds. And here are the tools you will need to cope with whatever unfolds. Great. Yeah. Yeah. I think I think that's that's so beneficial for everyone. So I thank you for your time. Thank you for everything. That was amazing. You you gave so many um, just beautiful nuggets of wisdom. And I just, I, so thank you. So it's my pleasure. And I love the work that you do. Um, we are big advocates for your work and um, I'm thrilled to be here and to collaborate with you. And um, I feel happy to know that there are folks out there who are doing what you do to help folks heal and recover from birth because that's an underestimated area of of this whole process and boy it sure is important i agree yeah. <laughs> i'm a little biased but i, I do agree oh absolutely <laughs> thank you so much colleen my pleasure thank you amanda do you ever wish that you could learn the essentials of pelvic health from an experienced pelvic floor physical therapist at a fraction of the cost and from the comfort of your own home this episode is sponsored by Progressive Pelvic Education, your source for online courses to expand your pelvic health knowledge and promote optimal wellness. Pelvic health is wealth, and there is a lot of essential information about our pelvic floor that isn't taught in school. Learn what to do and not to do to avoid the inconvenience and pain of pelvic floor issues in a self-paced course you can take anywhere. Visit Progressive pelvic to get access today.